Alright guys, Kuzo's here, and this is part 9 of my Max Payne 3 playthrough. And yeah, so a lot has happened. Like there was a bar up ahead. The irony was not lost on me. I figured sobriety was no use to me dead. So yeah, a lot has happened since the previous part. Um, yeah. Hey, are you lost? In more ways than I could possibly explain. I know you. At the disco, with the gun. Yeah, you had hair back then and better clothes. Uh, Anders Dedling from Steel, North Dakota. Why on earth are you here? Well, I'm, uh, looking for someone. What are you doing here? Oh, we, we came to help the cause. See, after I retired, my wife, she said I had to do something. And, well, you know, I always loved kids, so I got involved in Angels of the Hill. Oh, it's a great cause, and they're really great folk, and, well, now we come down twice a year to help inoculate the children of the favelas. Yeah, oh, it's simply wonderful giving back. Whole family does it. In fact, my, my little girl's coming in a couple of days. Aren't you afraid? Ah, I was a cop for 25 years. Hey, granted, steel ain't San Paolo, but, you know, I've seen things. And people are the same everywhere, good, bad, and different. Listen, have you heard anything about a, a woman about 28, rich. She was kidnapped. I heard she was being held around here. No. All right, well, good luck. All right, you too. You look like you need it. I gotta get back at it. Hey, I'll say a prayer for you. Another life lesson I didn't want. I'm really trying not to talk a lot through uh, uh, this part, but there are a lot of cutscenes, so... Um, yeah, I'm not gonna be talking through them, so... You can, you know, just watch them, and yeah. So there's another cutscene just now by this door. So yeah. Looking establishment would have a phone so I could call Passos. Either that or a gun so I could shoot myself and save these kids the bother. Hey, that telephone? Telephone, vai lá no fundo, segue em frente. When you're stuck in a foreign country and you don't know the words for reverse charges and you're in some lonely skin joint in the middle of some poor slum having just had every last cent robbed from you and you call yourself a bodyguard, then you know you're a loser. Hey, Matt. I buy you a beer. Do I know you? No, I don't think so. Look, if you're gonna shoot me, to make it quick, I'm a little busy. <laughs> if I was going to shoot you, I wouldn't waste a beer. Wait, come on. I'm trying to dry out a bit, so just a soda, please. Sure. Why don't you go sit down? Guaraná pra ele. Um choco pra mim. Bem gelado. Interesting haircut, by the way. I meant to tell you that. <clears throat> yeah, well. Wilson da Silva. Very good to meet you. Nice to meet you, I think. Although you'll forgive me if I promise never to employ you as my bodyguard. You did a great job watching after Rodrigo Branco. Fuck you. You were set up. Bet your ass I was. Now, let me ask you something. Have you ever seen this guy? Sihano. Yep. He's a real sweetheart. Yeah, he sure put his gang out of business. But don't worry, those guys, they're a small fry. This is the guy I'm interested in. Neves. And this is his little buddy here. Milo Hegel. They work for this vigilante group, Crasha Preto. Yeah, I know him. Well, they're very popular with right-wing politicians, like Victor Branco. Now, you see, many years ago, he helped clear some villages on a bit of land Rodrigo Branco wanted to develop. Rodrigo Branco? Yes, he did some very bad things. Anyway, have you ever seen this guy? 
Maybe at the stadium. I knew you were involved in that business. You know, I wanted to investigate that, but I got an order to blame it on some local street kids instead. Tell me, what happened there? Nothing. We simply went to hand over some cash to this guy's clowns for a, a ransom exchange when this guy's clowns jumped us and they shot everybody. Apart from you and your boy Passos. That's right. We had to shoot our way out of there. <laughs> they let you go. <laughs> it's okay. It's a little weird right now. But I know that Victor Bronco is involved in all this. I just don't know how or why. And I know that the Ufe are involved in all this as well, but I just don't know how or why. And you know what's going to happen? The moment is going to come along when I put all these pieces together, and at that moment, someone is going to come along and put a bullet in my head. Anyway, listen. I think you might want this. Thank you. I'll need it. And if it's Fabiana Branca you've come looking for, I think she's up the hill. So why don't you just go get her? I don't know. If I'm a cop. I mean, I'll fight corruption. I'll stand up to the rich and dumb. But if I go up that hill right now, I'll be dead in three minutes or less. Maybe you too, Max. You're in the jungle now. So it appears. If you survive the next hour, let's speak. You help me. And I'm gonna do what I can to help you. Good luck. I didn't know what to make of what this guy had just told me. What was true and what was just someone else's convenient bullshit. Then some less than friendly locals came in and found me in the wrong mood to party. Hey, Green. What are you doing? No comprende. Leave me alone. Você tem alguma coisa para mim? Do you got something for me? For you? I'll tell you what I got. I got a gun, and if anybody thinks they're gonna take it from me, they'd be dead wrong. Okay, so that, you know, Max's impulse again caused him trouble, but you know. I guess, I guess you know people just get on his nerves. You know, if you just watch the cutscene, you can sort of see like how he could have annoyed him. He said to leave him alone, he didn't, and you know, kind of he died because you know he messed with the wrong person. So yeah. So yeah, this so you know this is a pretty weird sort of club, sort of bar. I don't even know where it's just so much stuff going on in here. This is so weird. Uh, um, there's some painkillers back here. They told me the favelas were full of drugs. So you can make sure you get the painkillers that behind the bar and literally behind, like the room behind the bar. Um, you know, make sure you do an ammo street because the I don't know like why they've got so much guns in a club. Well, you know, it's the, I guess the country's the uh, country the, the whole area's got like. You know, guns available to them. So, um, anyway, uh, there's a cutscene coming up in just a second. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I think I'd find in here, but you know, two people, you know, in a cubicle, whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, that's pretty weird. Uh, just be be a bit precautious around the corners because there's people around there. You know, the enemies like literally around the corner. And yeah. Uh, so, just making our way through the level. I've got, you know, make, make sure I've like got everything. And guys, there's a cutscene right here, so I'm gonna stop talking. No shooting! Por favor, amigo! No, no! Relax, soldier. You're American? Oh, jeez, buddy. Am I glad to see you? Oh, fuck me. I've been coming to this shithole town for the last five years. It's like a fucking insane asylum. But it's got the cheapest pussy in the world. Fuck me. I mean, 
You're in a cat house in the slum, pal, doing who knows what. I'm a businessman, bro. And, and they were fully legal in, in this country. I, I, th I think. And, and I know how to tip, all right? It ain't my fault, man. It ain't my fault. Don't, don't judge me, all right? Have a nice day. Jesus. What a fucking creep. Yeah, that guy was weird. Um, anyway. <laughs> so, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of difficult recording this when there's, I, when, when I'm not to talk through cutscenes and it's literally it a cutscene. It was Monday scene. afternoon and I'd already been thrown out of a party, gone to a strip club and got into a bar fight. This latest midlife crisis was certainly ticking all the boxes. As I, yeah, well, interrupted as I said it, there's a cutscene every second, so it's kind of a lot to deal with here. Well, anyway. Okay, so there's another cutscene going up right now, so, yeah. The fireworks display was clearly in my honor, making sure everyone knew to roll out the red carpet for their surprise guest. Okay, hopefully I should have a while to talk now towards the end of the video. I was walking into another not so welcome party. These hoods didn't look like Commando Sombra. Not that I was gonna get picky. This was clearly their turf, and I just shot up their favorite skin joint. Or not, you know, could go either way. So, in the progression with the game, I'd say we're nearly halfway through. We're on like the 45% mark right now. Uh, maybe even, maybe even more, a little bit less. I don't know. Uh, something like that, around them sort of, around that sort of area. So, yeah, in a minute I'm going to have to end the episode, guys, because yeah, that's all I've got for this part. Like, what I've got laid out for this part, anyway. Um, try not to do, like, Colossus episodes, because they just take forever to render for me, and they do take uh, quite a bit, uh, well, time to upload. So, I'm sort of just doing it balanced episodes, so, like, 15 minute, 20 minute mark, try not to go over that. I did have a 32, 30, I don't know, I think I had like a 32 uh, minute episode on my, on like for a part of this playthrough. I think I was like part 4, I don't know, part 4, part 3, it was one of them, one of the first 1 to 4 parts, I think that was like that. So yeah, um, and also after, I tried, I tried to do it like uh, one episode a level, but like, it sometimes takes me like 40 minutes to do a, a level and I can't do that for a video because that will just kill me to do it like for, talking for like and going through 40 minutes of gameplay like cutting out like all the like audio like noises and all of that safe forever so uh, I think how I laid it out here is like easier for me so hope it turns out well when it's uh, done uh, guys I'm left in episode now so guys, I've been Kuzos, and I'll see you for part 10 of my Max Payne 3 playthrough. Uh, I'll see you around.